All right. Now I'm showing you a complicated term. In this lesson I'm going to show you how to create this term and get more complicated besides. So here I'm going to throw away all my work. When I do so I'm going to leave without saving. Now as it so happens I could come back in and restore all this lovely work I've lost very easily by going to restore autosave in the menu and picking the very last item. However, I really want to throw away the work because I really want to type it all over again. Sorry, Equities Lab. Now, so we start here, and I'm not any more interested in naming the screener than I was before. I'm trying to create a growth screen, so I'm going to use the rank across. But before I even get there, I have a little bit of housekeeping to do. In particular, I don't want to buy penny stocks, and I don't want to buy fly-by-night stocks with a market cap less than 500 million. So I'm going to say the market cap is greater than 500 million with the ever-loving MC, which will complete to market cap, and I'm going to hit the semicolon key to get another line so I can keep on typing. And I'm then going to type close is greater than 2. As an additional insurance against the vagaries of untradable stocks, I'm going to make sure that the trading volume is at least $1 million per day. So I'm going to go invoke the minimum within operator which allows me to go back several days and check the smallest value. Now I want the trading volume in dollars, not in shares. Because Berkshire Hathaway having a minimum volume of 100,000 shares in a day would be quite an event indeed. 251 is too many. That's a whole year. Let's do 21. And I use the M to say million. I could type zero six times and that would also work. Now I'm going to run that and we're going to get ourselves a respectable looking set of stocks. This, the server is right now multiplying close times volume and checking that within a 21 day period and taking the smallest value. Oh whoops, it took longer for me to describe how to do it than it did to do it. There we go. There are our reasonable stocks. Now I'm going to want to use this in, the, in a sentence. So we're going to go through some mystical seeming baloney to start with. I'm going to create a new tab. I'm going to call this tab Restrictions. This is what we use to restrict our universe when I'm doing ranking across, which you'll see soon enough. So I'm going to drag and drop this complicated looking term over. And I drag it over to the new tab I've created without letting go, and then I drag it into the text box. And that's a very visual, easy way to cut and paste. I also don't want to plot a boolean value, even though I could. It wouldn't do me any harm. So I'm going to click here to get the menu, and I'm going to unplot this variable. All that does is take the plot underscore off, but hey, saves me six characters of typing. Now, the rank across operator, it organizes everything into a league table, as it were, and gives you the top or the bottom, or more accurately reports the rank, where this thing is in the high score table on a given attribute. Most other systems will do this for a few attributes and compute it in the background and then make those fields. And the reason they do this is because it's ridiculously inefficient to do what we're doing, which is to, on the fly, as we're typing, compute some arbitrary weird product as we go. But I'm feeling inefficient. I mean, that's why we have powerful servers. I do, however, have to be able to type. It even tries to help me, but if I don't type the right thing, it's not going to get it. Now, at this point, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the EPS being in the top 10%. You will notice that Berkshire Hathaway is in this list. This is not a very meaningful list because, gosh, it's more share price than anything else. So let's instead compute the change of the earnings per share over a 251 day period. So I type change and I do 251. What does this change mean? Is this the change in dollars? No, it's the change in percent. So if it, if it doubles, it'll be 100. If it goes to zero, it'll be negative 100. If it stays the same, it will be 100. Now I'm going to rerun this, and I'm willing to bet that Berkshire Hathaway is no longer in our list. Let's find out. Nope, Berkshire Hathaway is not the high growth company you thought it was. Mr. Buffett is good at many things, but world-beating growth at any price is not one of them. At this point, 
We're gonna see what these winning stocks do. We've got a fairly large collection of them. We're rebalancing quarterly. Let's see what the market thinks of high growth on a quarterly basis. Oh look, we have almost precisely duplicated the SPY. Now I could at this point digress into a long diatribe about how the SPY is probably filled up mostly by market capitalization with high growth companies like Google or Apple or Facebook or, oh wait, this is how to use Equities Lab, not a diatribe on the market. Let's see what the, um, let's see what happens if I make this a slightly longer term perspective. Instead of looking quarter by quarter, let's look for the trailing 12 months. And I rerun the screen with this new ranking and it goes off and it computes the league table once every three months on the three months, buys those stocks, sells them a quarter later, recomputes the league table, buys them again, rinse, repeat, over and over again. You can see it's doing a lot of work. Now, maybe I'm not being picky enough. Maybe we need the top 1%. Well, that's easy enough to do. Nope, top 1% is bad. Maybe we want low growth companies. Maybe we want uh, companies in the bottom 10%. Let's try that. What happens if I go for low growth? Low growth outperforms high growth until the very end. Maybe really low growth. Let's try that. These are the guys who are probably changing negatively. Uh, either they, however, there's a slight persnicketiness here. They either started making money when they no longer were making money, they were losing money, and then they started making money. What's negative 10 times negative 1? Positive 10. Or they just really stink. Either way, uh, this strategy also really stinks. So let's go back to what we were doing before. However, I want to go back two, two years, not just one year. I want eight quarters of earnings to be totaled. Now I could type in plus, and then I could type in EPS 1Q, EPS 2Q, EPS 3Q, EPS 4Q, dot, 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 and this would be a very boring video. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to time shift with the as of operator my EPS trailing 12 months. Because the EPS trailing 12 months as of one year ago is otherwise known as the four quarters before that. And when I add them all together, I get, surprise, eight quarters. I'm going to name this thing the EPS trailing 24 months, and then I'm going to hit the quote key. When I hit the quote key, that will give me a variable name with whatever I typed in. Notice there is no variable, f no field with this. I just made a variable name. I could just as easily have typed um, when I was here, or I'll do it here since I already have a variable. I could have just as easily typed new variable. You'll notice that there's a quote keyboard shortcut listed in the list that looks like a piece of screen lint. It makes you want to reach out with your wiper and wipe the screen off there. So having done that, and now I'm going to backtest this thing and see if I get something better than my, um, like a good real estate agent, I took you to a dilapidated, horrible house, and now the screen looks wonderful by comparison. However, we're going to see if we can make it a little better. Let's also insist that we have a growth in free cash flow. So, rank across, I'm going to select it out of the menu, and we're going to do the change of the free cash flow per share over 251 days. However, here I'm going to do it per sector. Why am I doing it per sector? Because I can. Moo ha 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 ha. However, I still want the restrictions because I don't want some weirdo stock that was a penny and had a free cash flow of a penny and therefore had wonderful growth. I still want the top 90%. So now we're going to back test this and we're going to see some whirring. And it's going to take a little bit of time, but we might edit this out. That made it worse. Apparently we really don't like growth. What if we make them both per sector? Maybe that maybe we have an impedance mismatch where one's being ranked over the whole thing. That's possibly true. Now, notice that we have looked for both of them in the top 10%. If we go over here and screen, 
If there was no overlap, if it was completely random, the growth of earnings per share and free cash flow per share, then we would expect 1% of the market or about 10, this was 300 stocks, we'd expect about 30 stocks. There should be some overlap, but there's surprisingly little. So now I'm going to verify this by setting this to be greater than negative 1, which is what you do when you're debugging this. Well, gee, everything's going to have a range greater than negative 1. It's a 0 to 100 score. So I'd better have almost all the stocks that are in the top 10%. There they go. So there's a little bit of overlap, but not much. Now, I could theoretically decide that instead I'm going to go with a magic formula like I'm going to add the two rankings together, or add the two changes together, rather, and then rank that. What this says is I want the top 10% for some weird composite. I want, I want to make a composite ranking. So I'm going to delete this. Now we're taking the change in the free cash flow per share and the change in this EPS Let's get rid of this 24 months. We're going to do that by dragging the EPS T12M over top of the plus. That gets rid of the other term because it's, it's homeless. It has nowhere to go. And in Equities Lab, homeless people just disappear. It's a brutal world out there. Now I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to run this again. I'm just going to wait. And wait. Now imagine, if you will, a computer adding thousands, no, millions of numbers. We're going to take this entire panel and add it to that entire panel and, oh, wow, that was better. Oh, wait, we're screening on exactly nothing. Let's actually apply some ranking mojo. All we did now is verify that we have an EPS turning 12 months. That's not nothing. It can be negative if it wants, but it's not nothing. And we're going to do this. Now we're getting the top 10% of this weird composite ranking I've created. Makes almost no difference. And thank you very much. This is your Equities Lab tutorial on operators.